All right, so this is exciting. So the White House finally released some new information about crypto. Now, six months ago, I actually made a video called The New Crypto Executive Order Explained. And I'm gonna assume most people don't remember watching that video all the way back in March, so here's the short version. Earlier this year, President Joe Biden created an executive order to ask the government to look more into crypto so that they could understand it better. Now, the first part of that order was to ask the different agencies to figure out which of them would be responsible for which part of crypto. The second part of the executive of order was to ask the U.S. Department of State to develop new policy, new rules, new regulation, and new studies to find out more about crypto. And the third part of that executive order was to ask the Financial Stability Oversight Council to look more into stablecoins. And that's because they want to make sure that stablecoins don't destabilize the financial interests of the U.S. government because the government also wants to create its own stablecoin, probably something called Fedcoin, to potentially replace the U.S. dollar, and they want to make sure it doesn't crash the whole U.S economy. So those were the three things inside of that executive order. And last Friday, the White House finally published the results of those findings. And as always, there's new fear, uncertainty, and doubt every time these documents come out because nobody takes the time to read these really long and overly complicated press releases. So in today's video, I want to help explain exactly what the government thinks about crypto and how this will affect us later this year. So with that said, let's get right into it. Hi, my name is Andre Jick. Hope you're doing well, come for the finance, and stay for the short crypto video. See, still not a crypto channel. So first, I'll help explain exactly what was inside of that White House document, and then I'll give you my thoughts at the end of the video. The first thing the White House does, though, is acknowledge just how massive crypto has recently become. Last year, it reached a market cap of $3 trillion, of course, before collapsing, but they also acknowledge that roughly 16% of the people in the US have at one point or another invested in crypto. Now, you might be wondering, why does the US government want to get involved in crypto specifically right now? So they list six key priorities that they want to figure out. And their first priority with crypto is to destroy it at all costs. Just kidding. Their first priority is consumer and investor protections, meaning they want to have in place some sort of strict requirements and rules and protections to make sure that we don't get hurt from things like Terra Luna happening again. Their second priority is financial stability, meaning they want to integrate the crypto system into the current legacy system in a way that doesn't break anything because they don't want to break what already works. Their third priority is countering illicit finance, which is a fancy way of saying they want to know the difference between real money and fake money in the digital space. Their fourth priority is to maintain US leadership in the global financial system. And this is a very good thing because they realize having crypto and being the leaders of it allows them to have control over the global monetary system. Now their fifth priority is financial inclusion. And this just means they want more people around the US to have access to the financial system. Their sixth priority is responsible innovation. And this is just their way of getting to leverage what they discover in the crypto space to create their own crypto technologies. Now, most of this is actually really good news for crypto. So let me give you a point by point breakdown of what they found and how they plan to regulate it. So first, here are some of the crypto problems according to the White House. The first is a study that found that 25% of all crypto projects have had their white paper either cloned or replicated and they had a promise of a false get rich quick scheme. Another study found that crypto is extremely volatile and according to FBI statistics, the amount of people that have lost money due to crypto scams went up 600% in the year 2021 as compared to the year before. And according to the Federal Trade Commission, the FTC, they found that there was over a billion dollars lost thanks to crypto fraud in 2021 alone. So those are some of the bad things. Now, here are some of the things the government thinks that crypto could help with. First, they start by saying roughly 7 million Americans don't even have a bank account. And another 24 million Americans rely on very expensive banking services like checks and money orders. And overall, they say that it's extremely slow, especially in the remittance sector, which is where you send money overseas. And this is where they think that crypto could really fill in the gaps. Now, when it comes to stable coins, though, the government says that it can be extremely disruptive to the average consumer if those things are not regulated. And that's why they give the example of the crazy collapse of May 2022 with Terra Luna and then the other high profile bankruptcies with companies like Three Arrows Capital, Voyager and Celsius to name a few, which easily lost investors over $600 billion worth of wealth. Now, they also found that crypto has been exploited and used in illicit activity, used for money laundering and to finance crimes. So overall, the White House thinks crypto is 
great. So here is what they plan to do about it with their plan of action. But first, I wanted to personally share how to keep your crypto safe because you might have heard me say at the end of all my videos to move your crypto offline to a cold storage wallet. And that's why I'm so excited for today's sponsor, Ledger. With Ledger, you can secure, manage, and safely store over 5,500 crypto assets, including NFTs. Now, the Ledger Live app is a one-stop shop where you can buy, sell, exchange, and even store assets, including your NFTs, and you can visualize them with Ledger Live while keeping them safe on the Nano. And I've personally been using the Ledger Nano since as early as 2014, and I found that it was the safest and easiest way for me to store my crypto and NFTs. Now, you might have also heard last week that Ethereum went through something called the merge, and this is where it migrated from proof of work to proof of stake. So now more than ever, you need to be in control of your coins and your keys, which is why to celebrate this event, Ledger is offering the Merge Pack. The Merge Pack offers industry-leading security for your coins with the Ledger Nano X and unbeatable protection for your recovery phrase with the Bill Photo. With the Merge Pack, you'll get everything you need to keep your crypto safe. And for a limited time only, if you click the link in the description below this video, you can get both the Ledger Nano X and the Bill Photo together for 20% off. Just make sure you use that link in the description below this video. Thank you, Ledger, for sponsoring this portion of the video. Now let's get back to it. All right, so here's what the government's plan of action will be. First, they want to ask the SEC, the CFTC, the CFPB, and the FTC to take stronger action against the legal activity by encouraging them to work together and share their data with each other so that they can become more super effective. The second part of their plan is to ask an agency called FLEC, the Financial Literacy Education Commission, to educate people about the potential dangers of getting started with crypto. So I guess it's kind of like a dare equivalent for crypto. Let me tell you the time I bought two pizzas with 10,000 bitcoins. I've never personally heard about Fleck. I propose a new marketing campaign. Fleck, they detect, they reflect, but most importantly, they protect. It's my free consultation. It'll be popping with millennials and Gen Z. Trust me, bro. Another step they wanna take is have the Federal Reserve launch something called the Fed Now in 2023, which is a way of sending money instantaneously and be open 24 seven, acting as an interbank nationwide clearinghouse. And the way the government wants to do this is using something called RTP which is real-time payments. The way this works is it's an electronic bank transfer between banks that settles instantly. One of the technologies that uses RTP is Zelle. So basically, the government wants to create their own version of Zelle so they can track and monitor your taxes. I mean, keep you safe. Please, IRS, don't come after me. The government has also appointed the Treasury to give a finance risk assessment on DeFi or decentralized platforms by the end of February 2023 and to give a risk assessment on non non-fungible tokens or NFTs by the end of July 2023. So just picture people like Janet Yellen logging on to OpenSea, funding a MetaMask wallet, and then just having fun with some crypto kitties. The rest of the White House document leaves a laundry list of things to do like looking more into fraud, understanding crypto security risks, understanding crypto's impact on the environment, and the rest of the document is not that interesting. The TLDR is that it just assigns more responsibilities to different government agencies. But if you made it this far, let me give you my personal thoughts about what all of this actually means for the the future of crypto. Overall, I think this is really good news for the crypto space because it means the government is not trying to ban Bitcoin and the whole crypto space, so that is a good sign for the price. Unfortunately, I don't think the price is going to go up by much, if anything at all, because the government still does not give us any clear specifics inside of this White House document about really anything. We still don't know how they want to treat privacy concerns, and we still have no rules and protections for the average consumer. So for now, I don't see the government doing much about this because it just makes a promise that government agencies will look more into it. But I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon. And we have the US tax code to prove it because for the longest time, our tax code has been broken and the government has a financial incentive to fix it, to simplify it, because that means they'd make a lot more money, but they are still dragging their feet. And if you look at crypto, which is far more advanced and constantly changes and evolves, I just don't see the government catching up and giving us these clear rules. The best they can do for now is to give us specifics on how to pay our taxes with crypto, and they'll probably crack down and scrutinize these exchanges a little bit more, but I think we'll have to wait for some of the other things 
things like the consumer protections to come in the future. I really do look forward for the day where we can feel safe buying and investing things like Bitcoin and Ethereum, but for now, it's still the Wild West, just maybe a little bit less than it was before. As always, don't forget to have a wonderful rest of your day. Smash the like button, subscribe if you haven't already. Don't forget to grab up to $250 worth of free Bitcoin and then move it offline onto something like a cold storage wallet like Ledger's Nano Wallet and just be safe. And in the meantime, grab your free stocks. Links are all down below and then go track them automatically with the spreadsheet link down below in my Patreon. Love you. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you back here on Monday, Friday, sometimes Wednesday. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.